Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is ignoring terrorism. And the big question for this lecture is, should we even bother paying any attention to terrorists? Now, you'll remember we're trying to come up with ways to combat terrorism, and there are people out there that will suggest to you that we really shouldn't be paying too much attention to this. We shouldn't be investing a whole bunch of resources into combating terrorism. We should largely be sitting this one out. And this is in direct contrast to what the United States did following September 11th. If you were around during those years, you'll remember that for the couple years following September 11th, the majority of American policy, both domestic and foreign, was geared to responding to the September 11th attacks and the perceived threat of terrorism. And what this argument is, is saying that, you know, largely we shouldn't even have bothered. And there are a few reasons for this, and we will go through them point by point for the remainder of this lecture. So let's start off with the lethality of terrorism or the lack thereof. So here's a list of things or an assortment of things that are more likely to kill a random American than a terrorist. And you'll note that some of these things are very mundane. For example, water is on this list. That's because more people drown or you're more likely to drown in the United States than you are to die due to a terrorist attack. Now, of course, the September 11th attacks were very deadly, but on the grand scheme of things, on average, you're not very likely to die from a terrorist attack. And so that's why you see things like the flu up here much more likely to kill you than a terrorist would. And some of these things are in fact 10,000 times or more likely to kill you than a terrorist is. I think the pinnacle of this story here is this right here. So following the September 11th attacks, what you saw is a bunch of scared people or people frustrated with the longer lines and the delays at airports because of all the extra security. Instead of flying to their destinations, they started driving. And families, instead of flying across the country for vacations, would instead hop in their car, drive a couple of states over, and have a shorter ranged vacation. Now, what this was doing was flooding the road with extra vehicles. Vehicles. And as it turns out, people are really terrible at driving. And in contrast, flying, despite the September 11th attack, is very, very safe. In fact, if you watch a news story on a plane crash, that's because these things are so infrequent. When people die, it makes the news. This is in contrast to when people die driving. This never makes the news because this happens so frequently. People are really terrible at driving. In contrast, flying is the safest way you can possibly travel. Now, because of all of these extra cars on the road, what happened is thousands of extra people died following the September 11th attacks because there were more cars on the road and because people are bad at driving. And when I say thousands of people died driving afterward, I'm not saying thousands of people died in general. I'm saying thousands of people died in addition to what we would ordinarily expect had the September 11th attacks not happened and had people kept flying at the rate they were flying beforehand. So flying's very safe. Cars are not. And as you can see, individuals overreacting, getting into their cars and killing themselves rather than facing the perceived threat of terrorist attacks in the air. All right, second point here is the cost of terrorism. Now, following 9-11 and following the United States' response to 9-11, Al-Qaeda started claiming that they had intended 9-11 to induce the United States to overreact and spend billions and billions of dollars. In fact, some estimates range up to a trillion dollars in the 10 years following 9-11 spent on counterterrorism procedures, not including the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. So that's a lot, a lot of money that the United States has spent on this. And of course, the United States, United States in those wars in Afghanistan and Iraq lost thousands of soldiers who might not have otherwise died had the United States not gone over to Iraq and to Afghanistan. So there's this argument to be made that the United States' policy internationally was an overreaction and this caused the United States to spend billions of dollars overseas and perhaps up to a trillion dollars domestically trying to reinforce the status quo when in fact there wasn't really anything going on there. Now it's hard to say whether this was an actual strategy that Al-Qaeda had or it's just something they've conveniently claimed afterward, but nevertheless Al-Qaeda is even saying that we have overreacted in the United States to terrorism. So that's interesting. Now, the last point here is that you can have this opposite effect, the opposite effect of what you want by overreacting, and you could end up upsetting moderates in the countries that you really don't want to upset moderates in. So we talked last video about spoiling, right? So you can think about this as spoiling in reverse, where the United States, by overreacting, by pushing aggressively into the Middle East, creates a response and 
creates a response that moreover would not have existed otherwise had the United States just chilled out. And what's happening here is that you're pushing moderates over the edge, right? So there's some uncertainty perhaps in some minds of moderates in the Middle East about whether the United States is actually this this true devil or in fact there's just nothing going on there. And Al-Qaeda, of course, all the time is saying the United States is evil, the United States is evil, but these people don't really have any indication that this is true until the United States flies over and bombs people and upsets those moderates and as a result have funds and manpower flowing to al-Qaeda. So that's something that the United States has to be concerned about and al-Qaeda has benefited to some degree in having some moderates in those countries shift over to them who would have otherwise not shifted over to them. Of course, this is not saying that the United States hasn't gotten some sort of benefit out of Afghanistan and Iraq. The question is how much of that benefit has the United States received versus the cost. So that's indifference for you and why perhaps you should be indifferent to the United States' response to terrorism. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope to see you next time as we continue talking about how to combat terrorists. Join me then.